All right, number one, what'd you get? What is the relationship between world ozone depleting substances and ozone hole area? What do you notice on the graph? Okay, as which one goes up? Okay. What do we notice? What's the relationship? As what goes up, what goes down? So the ozone hole area goes up, right? And the ODS consumption is going down. So what does this mean? It means we are consuming less of these chemicals, but our ozone hole area is still going up or staying roughly the same over here. Why do you think that is? If we're if we've decreased the amount of like chemicals that deplete the ozone, why is our ozone hole still getting larger or staying the same? Because they're still in the atmosphere. They take a long time to break down. Okay, so um, that's why we see this ozone hole area leveling off. Uh, we would expect, though, that since our consumption is decreasing, that the ozone hole area might continue to level off and possibly decrease in the future, so get smaller, um, because it does take a while for these chemical compounds to break down completely in the atmosphere. If we look at the second graph here, it shows the, uh, the Antarctica ozone hole. What do we notice during what months is the ozone hole area the largest? Okay, so September and October. What season would that correlate to in Antarctica? Spring, right? So it, the seasons are the opposite because they are in the southern hemisphere. So September and October and November would correspond to our fall, which means it would be spring there. Um, and this is what scientists initially found when they went and looked at, they started measuring the ozone concentrations, is that every year in the spring, there would be a lot less ozone. So the whole hole would be bigger. Remember, we said it's not exactly a hole, but it's just a thin constant or a thinner concentration. Okay. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about ozone today, but I wanted to review um, biomes. So I have groups we're going to have to deal with these because some some people are gone who we said Lauren is gone and I think that's I have to kneel. okay um, autumn you can be with Charlotte and Becca then all right so I need you to find your partner okay you're going to grab one of these sheets up front you just need one per group you will notice that on this sheet Okay, there are um, precipitation and temperature. They're on separate graphs. They're not on the same graph. You are given two choices for the biomes that it could possibly be. You need to choose the correct biome. You can write on these, okay? So one sheet of paper with your partner. Ready, go. All right, so the first one here, the first uh, set of graphs. We have to choose between temperate, deciduous, or rainforest. What'd you say? Which one? Rainforest, right? Because we have roughly the same temperature and we have a high and low amount of precipitation, so like rainy and dry season. Next one, I know this is like still on the same page for you guys because it got messed up on the document. Is it a desert or a coniferous forest? Okay, so if we look at the temperatures, temperatures are about 20 and 30 degrees, which 20 degrees is like 70 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So remember, coniferous forests or taiga, that's up north, so it's going to be cool. So this would be a desert. Next one, we have grassland or tundra. What do you think? Grassland, right? The tundra would be super cold. What about the next one, shrubland or deciduous forest? I would go with deciduous, deciduous forest, so shrubland's going to have more of a wet and a dry season because, remember, shrublands are on the coast, okay? All right, next one, coniferous forest or rainforest? What do you think? Well, look at my temperatures. 
Zero degrees Celsius, that's freezing. 30 degrees, does it get to freezing in the rainforest? No, so it's going to be the coniferous forest, okay? What about the next one, tundra or desert? Negative 20, what do you think? Tundra, okay, tundra. And the last one, we have a grassland or a shrubland. What do you think? This is going to be the shrubland because we have higher amounts. We have a dry season and a wet season, right? All right. Um, I don't care what you do with those. You can, if someone wants to keep them, you can, or you can get rid of them. I need you to head back to your seat. All right, don't, um, we're going to take some notes. Hey, you guys, quiet down. We're going to take some uh, notes on CFCs. This will not be on tomorrow's uh, test. This is a separate chapter, but it fits in nicely. We're just going to do part of it. It will not be on tomorrow's test, um, but I wanted to get started on it. And so we're just going to hang on to this. We're only going to do, like, the front little friction. And then I want you to hang on to this, and we will get to the rest of it um, later on. Okay, so we're just talking about ozone. Ozone's a really big topic on the AP exam, so I figure if we can start talking about it now, hopefully. What? Well, what if I teach it to you now, and then we go over it again when it comes up in this chapter later on? I feel like you'd have a better chance of remembering it then, because we go over it twice. All right, you have more space to write on here per the request of Carter. Carter Kaz. Okay. All right. So, stratospheric ozone. You guys know the ozone layer. It filters out UVB rays. Okay. So, you need to fill in, in that blank, it says filters out harmful. You need to write down UVB rays there. So only stratospheric ozone filters out UVB rays. So we have tropospheric ozone, remember the troposphere that's down by Earth? There is ozone in the troposphere, okay, down by us. In the troposphere, it's a pollutant. It is not actually something that helps reflect UVB rays. So it's only in the stratosphere that it's helpful to us. And then you're going to write down this last part. point. It forms when a free oxygen atom, so O, is added to an oxygen molecule, O2. And then it'll form O3, because we said ozone, its chemical formula is O3. Good. So notice we have the sun here. The sun in this diagram is um, showing you that, remember, the UV rays can break apart oxygen molecules and cause the formation of ozone. It can also cause ozone to break down, right? And that's a natural process that occurs in the atmosphere. All right, so now we have CFCs. So we'll find the definition here. CFCs are chemicals that are found in aerosols, styrofoam, refrigerators, and air conditioners, and they promote the breakdown of ozone.
All right, so CFCs add chlorine. So you just need to fill in that blank where it says add blank to the atmosphere. They add chlorine. And that chlorine molecule is really the one that does the damage, okay? So a single chlorine atom can break down as many as 100,000 ozone molecules. And I'll show you how that happens with this diagram or this animation here. So we look at the animation. Um, we see an ethyl molecule. molecule and then get stuck there. Now if we look at this pie chart, this pie chart shows us the percentage of um, products that have CFCs in them. So refrigeration, solvents, foams, aerosols, and then other. Um, so it's a pretty even distribution among these different items. All right, so you need to fill in the blank here. It caused the ozone hole over Antarctica. There are also other ozone holes over the northern hemisphere, okay? So it's not just over Antarctica. And it increased the UVB radiation that comes down to Earth. And then I got rid of the uh, second bullet point, so I'm just going to write it here. So the colder the winter, the larger the ozone hole. And remember, the ozone hole is not actually a hole. It's just the thinning of the ozone layer. And what we'll see is that uh, when we have really cold winters, it prevents the CFC. In cold temperatures, the Cl molecule, instead of going and breaking apart the ox or the ozone, it'll form with another Cl molecule. So it doesn't like to um, typically bond with ozone during the winter, but then in the spring, when it warms up, all those chlorine molecules are released, and then we get this really big hole all at once. So cold temperatures. So here's a picture of the ozone hole. You can see it. Um, this dark spot is like the thinner parts of it. So this is in 79. And then here's obviously in 2008. So pink is, you know, very thin concentrations or small concentrations. Um, you have this written down. Increased UVB radiation can cause skin cancer, eye problems, suppressed immune system. That just means a weakened immune system. That's one of the reasons why they're concerned about it. So what do they do? Well, this has been going on for a while. So this is the Montreal Protocol. So a whole bunch of countries got together and they decided that they were going to reduce their CFC production by 50% by the year 2000. So this happened in 1987. So they added more regulations. They said, hey, you can't put these chemicals in to products.
Montreal Protocol, actually, as you saw on that graph from the warm-up, our CFC consumption, we have been consuming or using far fewer CFC-containing molecules okay, in our products, which is good. Now, has our ozone hole recovered? No. So if we look at this graph here, this graph is showing us Without the Montreal Protocol, we would expect the ozone, or well, this is the chlorine concentration, so the amount of CFCs to just keep increasing, increasing, increasing. And we'd see that with the ozone hole, it would just keep increasing, increasing, and increasing. With the Montreal Protocol, we get it starting to decline, actually. All right. You can look here. These are all examples of different CFC-type compounds that break down ozone. So you see C, Cl, Okay, so they all have carbon in them. A lot of them have chlorine. Okay, some of them have bromine or fluorine. Anyone know anything about fluorine, chlorine, bromine? Anyone know what those have in common? So in the periodic table, we have the noble gases. They have eight electrons in their outer shell. These are the halogens. They have seven in their outer shell. So they all behave similarly. Okay, do you need to know that? No, but it explains why we can get different types of these molecules because they all behave really similarly. They want, all want one extra electron to get that stable octet. All right. Um, so as we continue on, we'll see that there are some substitutions for CFCs. You know, maybe they use bromine, but they're still harmful, okay? So one last thing I wanted to leave you with. This is an image of the ozone hole, 71, 2015, kind of where we're at now. And this is their prediction. As we're going right now, they're predicting the ozone hole will recover by about you know, 2065. And the reason they're predicting that is because our consumption is going down, but we're going to see some of those CFC molecules um, start to break down in the atmosphere. So right now, our ozone hole is still staying about the same size. That's because those CFC molecules haven't broken down yet. So they'll continue to break down, start to break down, and then we should see that ozone hole recover, okay? All right, so now we have time. Um, I want you to get out your review, okay? We're gonna work on your review. If you did not finish the CFC lab, like the last couple questions from yesterday, finish that. Um, and then reminder, I will be here after school today, three to 4.15 before conferences. If you wanna come hang out, if you wanna review, if you wanna work on your review with other people, I'll be here, okay? So we're gonna work on the review. I have books up front. And that's about it.